Welcome back to the Chad AC Show, News Talk KFYO. It is election season. Joining us on the phones uh, this morning, a gentleman who uh, joins us uh, throughout the year, uh, Texas Railroad Commissioner uh, Ryan Sitton, who uh, today is officially uh, filing for re-election. Uh, good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm great, Chad. How are you doing? Doing well. I appreciate you joining us, and uh, you're filing for re-election for the Texas Railroad Commission today, correct? Yes, sir. I sure am. And I'm sure you remember, Chad, I was actually on your radio show the day we formally announced, and now I'm back talking about filing. So I seem to connect with you when the big events are happening. Well, that's great, and uh, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, talk about this race and, and why uh, I, I, you know, why you're moving forward with re-election and, and why people should care about the Texas Railroad Commission. Well, thanks for asking that, Chad. You know, it's funny, my my uh, friends kind of joke with me that the Railroad Commission is the least famous job in all of politics <laughs> because no one knows what it does unless you're in the oil and gas industry. And, uh, you know, it's a down ballot statewide race. But, you know, it's funny, when you think about what's happening in Texas today, even with the downturn in oil and gas and kind of the challenging price environment, our oil and gas economy still continues to grow. And lately we've had some, some, some layoffs of the number of employments, the, the level of employment are coming down. But when you look over the next 10 to 15 years, the opportunity in oil and gas production, refining, midstream, export, import, I mean, energy is it's, it's just the backbone of our state. And so why run for re-election with the opportunities in energy bigger than they've been in a generation to serve in that capacity as an engineer, as someone who has been in and around the oil and gas industry for 20 years and who knows what good regulation looks like and how that benefits the people of this state, it's very rewarding to be involved in that and to, and to help ensure that we play that leadership role. So I'm excited to, to continue to have that conversation with the people of the state of Texas and hopefully serve in this role for the next six years. What, what more needs to be done in the, in the energy sector in Texas? Well, from a development perspective, you know, we've, we've seen, a, a, as usual, ebbs and flows, right? I mean, a lot of capital, a lot of money come in, and a lot of wells drilled. And over the last couple of years, we've seen that the, the investment community is starting to get a little bit, hey, you know what, we'd like to see a little more stability, a little more consistency in the exploration and production side. And you've got things like Saudi Aramco, the, the, the Saudi national company, saying they're going to go public. So a lot of the, the economics and the markets around oil and gas are shifting. So coming back to your question, what needs to be done is operators continue in the state of Texas to show strength, to show they know how to run oil and gas companies better than anybody around the, the world, and they can do so profitably even at these prices. Now, what as a regulator do I do with that is make sure that people in and around the oil and gas development communities know that this stuff is being done safely and responsibly. So that's good regulation, uh, not overbearing regulation, but working with the industry to understand new technology. It also means that, we're, that I'm communicating at a really high level with anybody who's curious about oil and gas activities. And finally, upgrading our systems here so that information and data is accessible to people across the state whenever they want it. Because if people know, man, those guys are doing a good job and what they're doing is stable, it's safe, it's reliable, and they know that everybody in the state benefits from that, then the entire energy industry and the state as a whole will benefit. Visiting with Texas Railroad Commissioner Ryan Sitton, uh, I believe you have uh, at least uh, one Democrat opponent if they win the nomination uh, in, in the primary. Uh, and, and talk about that dynamic. And, you know, this is one of those races where people may ask, why, why does it matter? You know, why is this a partisan race? What does it matter if there's a Republican uh, on the Texas Railroad Commission versus a uh, versus a Democrat? Tell folks why that matters and, and what the differences are uh, between uh, you and, and the Democrat in the race right now. Well, as a matter of fact, I think there's been as many as three people who've said they're going to run to, to try and get the Democrat nom nomination. And from the little bit I know of, of the group, we'll, we'll wait and see who actually wins. They're, they're all kind of an anti-oil and gas group, right? Keep in the ground, shut down flaring, uh, you know, really, really, over, really try to regulate more heavily and, and put a state or a, a regulatory mark on industry. And look, you cannot argue the fact 
that, that everybody who's driving to work today and stops to fill up their car with gas and pays $2 and, what, 20 cents a gallon, $2.30 a gallon, man, they are benefiting from the fact that in Texas, energy is affordable and it's reliable. While out in California, where it's controlled by Democrats, the prices are $5 a gallon and they're having rolling blackouts. Yeah. I mean, th- there's no question. Either you are pro-energy, pro-stable energy, or you're not. And, the, and Republicans as a whole, and myself and especially as the first engineer in 50 years in this role, understands what that means to a teacher or a construction worker or a nurse who is driving into town today and has to fill up their car. That's, that's vital. And, and the Republicans stand for that kind of powerful energy position. The other group does not. Uh, I, I know that uh, we've talked about this before here on the program. We're visiting with Texas Railroad Commissioner Ryan Sitton. That you, you want to play a, also just a, have a larger discussion overall uh, about Republican values in Texas and in keeping uh, Texas red. What, what are you What are you hearing since the last time we we visited with you? And I, I know you've uh, you know done some of these uh, town halls and, and and you've gone and you've talked uh, to folks. What are you hearing about you know the the, the about Republicans? in Texas and, and keeping Texas red? Yeah, thank you for asking that, Chad. And, you know, in fact, one thing I'm doing now that I, I, have, I have really thought a lot about is I've stopped using the word keep Texas red. And to my kind of hardcore Republican friends and colleagues and, and family, they're like, wait, why? I said, because in the end of the day, partisan brands, when you say something like keep Texas red, isn't resonating with people in, who are you know, swing voters but when we talk about our values, things like family first, things like limited government, low taxes, uh, affordable, reliable energy, free market, Chad, I'm telling you, 60, 70 percent of people in this state agree with those values. Right. So what I'm trying to do is say, as Republicans, this is what we stand for and make that a prominent position. I'm as proud a Republican as you will find, but my mission is not to keep the state Republican. It's to keep the state strong, and the fact is Republican values make this state strong. And so many people in this state agree with it, so it's a small change to how we talk about it that I think will have a profound impact on the election cycle next year. How can people find out uh, more about your campaign? Thanks for asking, Chad. The easiest thing to do is go to our website. It's ryansitton.com, R-Y-A-N-S-I-T-T-O-N.com. And we're going to have so much content that talks about you know, personal performance, how individuals you know, can, can do well from a political perspective, business perspective, but even a fitness perspective. We're really trying to do some different things to engage with the people of this state at a, at a heavier level. So once again, getting back to it, the things that we all aspire for, we can do that together. And um, so, yeah, have people check me out. It'd be awesome. All right, very good. Uh, always a pleasure to have you on. Texas Railroad Commissioner Ryan Sitton will uh, visit with you as the election continues. I sure appreciate it, Chad. Have a great day. You too. That's uh, Texas Railroad Commissioner Ryan Sitton here on the Chad HD Show News Talk, KFYO.